We ask this question, who am I, from the perspective of Earth and life, the, the most important thing that we've learned from the new story is that we are part of an evolutionary process. So Earth is not something separate from us. Earth is actually what gave birth to us. We are embedded in this amazing process. We, we have certain ideas, we've learned about this, but it is it's overwhelming to imagine that this process brought us forth. The universe created stars, they exploded, planets came out of that, and now in this evolutionary process, here we are. So the, to know our nature means to look at and, and discover the nature of the earth and the, the fundamental power that enabled all this to happen we call self-organizing dynamics. It's just a phrase from complexity science. It is the way in which the things of the earth by themselves give birth to greater complexity. This, is, this is a, was a hard idea to get to because in traditional societies, we, we would imagine a, a former being, maybe like ourselves, actually shaping the earth like a potter would shape a pot. It was inevitable we would think that way because that's the way we saw things happen. But the way the earth actually proceeded is, is, is more interesting and deeper. It, the, the chemicals of the earth, simply by interacting with one another, give rise to these complex systems. And when complexity reached a certain point, it protected itself with a membrane. And then inside that membrane, we have the first living cell. So just emerging from the oceans and from the, the rivers and from the, the continents was this new form of existence we call life. That's who we are. We are a further extension of the self-organizing dynamics of this planet. So life begins, say, 3.9 billion years ago, and it's been a, a series of transformations uh, uh, throughout. And two of these that are amazing to reflect on. Um, the first is photosynthesis, so that life was, was existing by um, eating the energetic molecules of the oceans. But Life grew so quickly that it was removing so many of this you know, food that it needed a new source of energy. And so these, these microorganisms found a way to actually enter into a relationship with the sun. It's amazing that, that they found a way to, to construct molecules that resonated with the light from the sun. And that resonance was enough for them to be powered by the sun. So it is a fundamental feature of, of our planet that it, it's so inventive. I mean, it, it, talk about an imagination to come up with the idea that you can construct a, a, a molecular system that could catch a photon that's moving 186,000 miles a second. And it has this amazing property that as soon as you touch a photon, it disappears. So the microorganisms found a way to actually capture that form of energy. So that's, we call it photosynthesis, but it, it's uh, deep magic. And then the other um, I might mention would be, would be sexuality. This, this, and this was, this was invented, again, 
very, very early on, I'm talking about microorganisms, that the paramecium, for instance, it will, its form of sexuality is to, is to um, identify a mate and then hand half of its genetic material over to its mate. And its mate hands half of its genetic material back so that suddenly you are a new creature. I mean, you, you, you have all this new genetic material you didn't have before. I mean, talk about a risky move. You don't know exactly what you're getting into, and, and, yet, and yet that kind of daring and risk and, and um, interpenetration was what enabled life to flourish and diversify. And you see, the point is, who am I? I am that. I'm that same process. We are humans. We are, we are taking this ability to enter into deep relationship, like the earth with the sun in photosynthesis or the deep relationship of, of, of um, a mating couple, we are, we are taking that ability to enter into deep relationship in our own um, adventure of being human. We, are, we, we have that same power within us. When we think about who we are and, and consciousness in particular, the, and, and the life process, we, we find that the earth wants to uh, come into deeper understanding of itself and a deeper way of reflecting on who we are. The invention of the I would be an example. Life existed for three and a half billion years without eyes. So, I mean, obviously, if you can exist for three and a half billion years without an eye, you don't need eyes to exist. But it's, it's almost like the life process wanted to, to deepen its awareness. And so it invented eyes um, 500 million years ago with the trilobite. It invented eyes that were made out of calcite, minerals. It was like so desperate to see, it actually found a way to see using a mineral. And so then um, the, the experience of a trilobite included this visual uh, dimension. And, and then other kinds of eyes were invented, like the worms invented eyes using water. And then this was developed through the vertebrate line. Our eyes come out of that particular lineage. So there's these various lineages of eyes. And scientists estimate that Life invented eyes 40 separate times. So scientists estimate that life has actually invented sight 40 different times. So it wasn't an accident. It's just one way scientists interpret this is that the whole system of life was going to find a way to see one way or another. It's, and then there would be hearing as well and touch. So it, one way to think about this is that what's the essence of life? Life wants deeper experience. Life wants a richer experience. Life wants to see. And we, we then, what is the nature of the human? Then we come out of this process. We want to know, we want to see, we want to understand deeply. It is a, a further development of this basic impulse in life itself. <laughs> 